Hello, it's Yudal Shvat, Tav Shin Pei, Yom Rishon, I get the Vach, and I'm going to split this into two because I have two pieces that are very good and related to one another, but I don't want to make it too long, so we'll do it in two sections today. <clears throat> There's a Pasuk, I'm doing the Zer Shimshon Yudalid, it says, but the Pasuk, Ko Amachla Asha Samte B'Mitzrayim, Lo Yosem Alecha, Ki Ani Hashem Reifecho. I thought this was pretty Nogea, uh, considering the uh, supposed coronavirus world uh, epidemic. We'll see how it goes. It says in the Shulchan Aruch, in Chesh and Mishpat, in Simen Tav Chaf, Sif Chaf Aleph, Im Asher, Im Omar Loi HaMazik, if the Mazik says to you, Ani HaRape Eschol, no, he already damaged you, so... If he says to you, I'll heal you, okay? Ain't shame him We don't listen to him. No. Hello, maybe you're right. He has to hire the best doctor and pay him to heal you, okay? is our healer. He heals all of us. It's impossible. But if he would do, he would uh, injure us somehow. He's not able to heal us because of the halach and shulchan aruch. The mazik can't heal the per, the victim. Therefore, he doesn't injure us. That's the reason why he is not even going to put on us any disease. Because Hashem is our Rafa. So you're going to ask, of course, the obvious question is, uh, where did the disease come from if everything is Hashem? <clears throat> well, we do have a few sins, maybe. <laughs> this is the, rigid, the reason in the Midrash and Shir Hashem, Rabba and Dalid, the base. <clears throat> it's actually in Shir Hashem, Parsha Dalid. But it's not your doubt at base. Al Pasak Shne Shadaiach Keshneich Aforim. Gneg Nagaif Hashem is Mitzrayim. Nagaif Rafu. It's a Pasak in in uh, it's a Pasak in Hoshea, I think. One second. No, I apologize, it's Yeshayao, because you will see in a second there's another Pasak in Hoshea. In Nagaf Hashem is Mitzrayim, Nagaif Rafu. Veshavu ad Hashem v'neater lohem v'rafaam. It's passing Yeshaya Yutas, passing Chav Beis. Hashem smote the Egyptians. Nagaif first he smote them v'rafoi and then he healed them. So that's what his point is that the in by by non-Jews the first is the smit smiting and then the healing. Nagaf Nagaf Hashem is Mitzrayim Nagaif Rafu Omer Rav Shlakish Ena Kadosh Baruch Hu Makas Yisrael Alim Kain Bayre Lahem Rafuat Tchila. It says God does not smite the Jewish people unless He creates for them the Rafua first, like it says Shenemar Kirafi LiYisrael. Aval Omos Aylam. When it comes to the nations of the world, Mitchila Malka Aysam first He smites them. Yachakach Merapeh. Shinemar it says, Kirafu, Nagoif Rafu. He first smites them and then he heals them. Yishum da Alkarcha Tsarch Lev Roya Rafu, Kailam Amaka, Kadesha Tavay Meilel. He's got to first create the, <clears throat> the uh, healing, the, 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 the pulp, whatever, the, uh, the medicine before, and then he can smite them. Lacher Shehika Isam Hinehura Raifeh. So after he smites them, he becomes the healer. So he can't heal them if they want to cure themselves. This is the Pasuk in Yumiao Yud Zion, Yud Dalit, Pasuk Yud Dalit, Rafaini Hashem Ve'erofe. Even though you smote me, hit me, but still in all, please heal me. Because you are my 
praise. Zil chidush akasa. That's the pasuk in Devorim Lamed Beis Lamed Tes. Mochatzti va'anai ani arape. I will hit you and I will heal you. Hani mili beis. Hani mili beis. So that's only by Jewish people. I will im ha'omais k'siv. It says nagayf arafu. First he smites them and then he heals them. The mashman nagayf al yidei mashchis. It means he's going to smite them through a mashchis of uh, angel. And he'll also heal them through a shliach, through a messenger. There's another answer to the question that falls on this pasuk. If God doesn't put the the machla on you, so why does he have to heal us? Right? So the pasuk remembers that kol machla asher samti. Any machla that I put on the Egyptians, I'm not going to put on you, because Hashi, Ani Hashem or Ifecha. Hello, the fisha ha makla shabo al mitzrim ho yelo oinish on the kama. The makas that came on the non-Jews, the Egyptians, was for to teach them a lesson and to make them do tshuva, of course, and also revenge for what they did to the Jews. The kedichsev it says in Tehillim. Kuf mem tes al pasuk zayin lasos na kama vagoyim. We say that almost every day. The chesiv and shmois yodalit and yodches. The yedu of Mitzrayim ki ani Hashem bichvad bichik kavdi befarai. It says in pasuk yod capital yodalit pasuk yodches. The yedu of Mitzrayim ki ani Hashem bichavdi befarai bichik beyeforoshal. That's the whole pasuk there in Mashalach. Om nam hayisurim she avoyu alecha lo yiu b'derechse. But the the surim that I give to the Jewish people, I'm not going to do in this way. El kedei l'rap hoischa kedei she tashuv v'tshuva. The reason he's going to give us sicknesses and machlos and whatever tr- challenges we're going to ch- we're going to have, it says not because he wants us to be sick. And to give, give, do, do some bad to us. Although he's going to make us do tshuva, but loy tashu lachet and not re- return to the sin. The segula for the zera shimshon. I'm going to break into two parts as well because it's a long one. This, the first one is I work in a profession that's popular among yidden accounting, pitting my well-trained brain against law lawyers on the other side, <coughs> which is called tax authority. <laughs> it's my job to find loopholes in the tax codes that will save my clients as much money as possible. When my client comes makes forty or fifty thousand dollars a year, the savings might equal a few thousand dollars, which is nice for them, but isn't usually tremendously significant, although in most cases it is in some cases it is. Everything changes when I'm an accountant or head of the accountancy team for a major company. Then every loophole I can find I find can save the company millions of dollars. Doing a good job for an international firm means that your reputation will precede you in the industry with clients beating down your door no matter what the cost. And there's another point to consider. <clears throat> Once you become the account for a company, you learn all their secrets and help plan their strategy. In other words, you become part of the team, which means they that you, they won't be in a hurry to let you go unless there's a major fight between one of the, some of the key pillars. After all, if they hire someone else, that person will have to learn all the details you already know. For that reason, a company will usually retain the accountant they know and have used for many years. About seven years ago, I did business with a friend who happened to be the president of a major company. Our mutual business was successful, but for whatever reason, it didn't lead to anything more steady. The deal had been nice, but what I really wanted was for my friend to appoint me in-house accountant for his of his firm. Unfortunately, this never materialized. As the years passed, my friend's firm grew, grew and grew, becoming extremely successful in his field. I gave the matter a lot of thought, and I decided that since we were friends who had also been successful in business together in the past, and since I had a first-class reputation as an accountant, maybe it was time for me to arrange a meeting with my friend and offer my services. Figuring there was nothing to lose, I asked the secretary if we could schedule a meeting on the 6th of Elo. 
now the sixth of Elul happens to be the yard site of the Zeres Shimshon, Zecher Tzadik Evracha. I had by then been learning the Zeres Shimshon Svarim for a while and felt connected to the Tzadik from Italy. I therefore set up the meeting and hoped for the best. We met on the Zeres Shimshon's yard site. The meeting went well and he called me about a week later to offer me the position and tell me that I would be handling their accounts from now on. I was so excited that I had been offered the count. The offer went against Derech HaTeva to such a degree that I made a beautiful Sudas Haida to thank Hashem for having granted me such kindness. In addition, I contacted my good friend Reb Yisrael Zilberberg and I asked to be uh, mefarsim the story that happened to me because I felt it was important for Yudin to hear about what happened on the day of the Zerah Shimshon's yard site. After learning from the Zerah Shimshon about the horses of Mitzrayim and how it makes no difference to the Rebbein Shalom, whether the enemy arrives riding on one horse or a million horses, I knew that nothing was beyond the scope of Hashem's power. To Hashem there is no difference between $20,000 account and a $50 million account. We have to remember that and internalize the message. That my personal Yeshua occurred on the, on the day of the Rebbe's yard set made the, the miracle so much more geschmack for me. At the Suda, I told my guest a word from the Zerah Shimshon on Parshas Bishalach, where he discusses the Pasuk, Hoidu Hashem Kitav Kilam Chazdo. Chazdo. The Zerah Shimshon wanted to know why the Pasuk repeats the word Ki. It's two times. Ki Tav Ki Leoilam Chazdo, right? I told him, if you give thanks and praise to the Rebbein Shalom, when he does one kindness for you, then he will increase the goodness in your life. That's what the Pusik is telling you. If you praise Hashem for the good that comes your way, then he will keep sending you more and more good eternally. Because as everyone knows, giving thanks for the good in your life brings more good in its wake. Needless to say, it was a wonderfully uplifting evening in every way, reinforcing what I had always known about Hashem's ability to do exactly as He wants in His universe. Okay, there's another part of the story. I'm not going to say it right now, but I want to give my kitoivs, my hoidul Hashem kitoivs, because my wife said we had three beautiful things happen in the last couple of months. One is my daughter got engaged. Yes, Hashem, Shah Toivu Metzlachas, to a wonderful boy from Cleveland, named Ron, D- uh, David Ritchie, Richland, Richland, David Richmond. And the uh, second thing is, <clears throat> my other daughter just received it. She won a, a raffle, which we have a, <laughs> a rule in our family, the Langs never win any raffles, but she won a huge sum of money and she really needed it. And the third thing is, um, my, another, my daughter-in-law <clears throat> gave birth to a normally healthy baby Hashem, but she was before she went into labor she was the baby was a breach and she, it was a miracle that the baby turned around and came out normal <laughs>